Uh, Prime Minister, good evening. Howell Bramble from Howell's News. I've not seen you for a long time, sir. Uh, now, many years ago, I attended a press conference at OTI at which the, the Bastia Rehabilitation Project was very gra grandly announced. Uh, Mrs. Ross Robinson, I think, was involved in that, and I was able to sit on my veranda and look at her supervising the planting of trees by Port Zante there. I saw those trees mutilated many times. Eventually they grow. But what we have now is a creeping slum. There, 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 there never was any uh, notice saying these trees are protected by section so-and-so, standing order, SRS, uh, and that there will be a penalty for interfering with the trees. So you, you, you have to witness somebody coming there to, with the barbecue and literally burning the trees down, blasting them. And when, when the man is spoken to, he said, look, when the tree dies, I will put up a tent. Put off a letter to the, the permanent secretary environment. You get no reply. I mean, that is not good for government. So I want to know, so I listened to when you were announcing the portfolios to see who was responsible for the environment. And I didn't hear that, in, that, that. I want to know if the environment is still part, if the government still holds any responsibility for the environment, and if the government has abandoned the Bastia Rehabilitation Program. No, the, the government cannot abandon the Bastia rehabilitation project. In fact, I believe such a project is going to go in, in its scope and in its grandeur because we are now talking about advancing um, Bastia, what is the present um, Port Zante, advancing that eastward and westward um, as quickly as possible to facilitate the necessary growth and development which we anticipate in the country. And also, of course, to reach across um, the Bay Road on both um, up to Fort Thomas Road and also um, in, the, in, the, in the Irish Town area and also down in the New Town area to really um, have some redevelopment of those two areas as we expand Bastia in the way that we have, exp the roots that that is, in the way that we have expanded um, with, with regard to Port Sante um, being present. And so the, the rehabilitation and the beautification of downtown Bastia and the roadstead is, is, is a critical part of that development um, program that we have, we have put in place. Um, I, 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 I tend to say to you that um, there's great concern being shared when I mean, you say that um, Bast is becoming um, a creeping slum, I mean, that is of great concern to me. And the, the trees, which you are correct, um, have eventually taken full, um, full growth after so many um, difficult periods of trial and support. Now, we cannot afford to allow our trees to be just wantonly destroyed like that. The ministry of sustainable development has one of the department that, that is the department of physical um, planning and environment. And so the environment remains an integral part of the ministry, an integral part of the government's um, development program, an integral part of the development control and planning that is absolutely necessary to move our development in a particular direction. I happen to be that minister. And I give you full assurance that I will definitely pay closer attention to matters of this kind. And by the time I'm sure the next meeting comes around, we would have something more positive to say okay, so as, in this regard. As, 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 a, as a medical officer, sir, yes. I hope that you will insist that someone takes responsibility in St. Kitts in Bastia for enforcing the anti-litter laws. I've never seen and heard of anybody being prosecuted for littering in St. Kitts. People put down their plastic bottles, their boxes all around, and uh, as if they, there's no, no, no laws against it, as if it's, it's a good thing. Uh, the next thing, sir, the next question really is, 
it's difficult to understand the politics of St. Kitts and Nevis. When I came here in 95, a sage, a historian, a very wise man, told me, look, you see that road across the peninsula? Kennedy Simmons spent $30 million of taxpayers' money to build it to benefit his rich friends. I've heard nothing about this until when uh, I went into YouTube and heard Charles Wilkin talking to Mr. Grant at a press conference and saying, look here, let me tell you something. When Dr. Simmons built that road, Dr. Simmons made it clear that that peninsula is going to play a major role in the economic development of St. Kitts and Nevis. And he warned Mr. Grant, look, you better make it clear, you better not um, decry this project at all, any projects on the peninsula. And Mr. Grant quite rightly said that he had been on record of saying that what is happening there is good, and I remember him saying so myself. But what would have been your position, sir, if the people who were campaigning against you had had the, the craft, and I say so advisedly, to say, look, anything that happens on the peninsula belongs to Pam because we started it. Our Prime Minister um, had that road made and at great risks to himself. What would have been your reaction? What would have been your response? My usual typical response, absolute nonsense. <laughs> Country belongs to us. Whatever development would have been started at a particular time in our political and economic development, if it holds potential in support of our future development, it should be continued. The only thing is that maybe one would have done it differently, but the fact that it is done, of course, it was our duty to go out and market the Southeast Peninsula, find people who were credible investors, who started developments and continued. Not those who were found on the Kennedy Simmons administration started, and it would appear for self-serving purposes, pulled up their stakes and went over to Anguilla. I think to a large extent, the government has followed a basic principle. If something has potential to be good, develop it further to realize its potential. And that is why my government is a matured government. That's why it was voted for for the fourth term, because the people of St. Kitts and Nevis have come to recognize that this is not a government that plays petty party politics with the future development of the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. This is not a government of victimization. This is not a government that plays um, like little boys playing games because somebody started that, throw it aside, start your own. No. This is a matured government, highly respected. That's why it got its fourth term.